Yeah. It's a wonderful Christmas day for those of you who celebrate it. Um, I have many times in my life. Don't much now, but don't have any kids. I do have instead my little chickens and my cats. And oh yeah, just pick some fresh watermelons. And um, over there is my house. That's Tantra. And uh, I love living there. I love all this greenery. You see those trees? That's year round leaves. That's live oak trees. I'm telling you what. I've, I've lived in Texas about 30 years now. I love Texas. I love it. Now, I wanted to mention a proposal to you. It would allow you to get down here where you could have fresh watermelons for December, possibly, like I am. You could also grow some other things. We have uh, canals I've been building, if you're watching, and ponds. And it's a chance to be able to get away from up north in the wintertime and come down here and have beautiful green trees and be able to hear the crows and the, all the different types of birds that come down here to stay with us, uh, cardinals. Oh, you see some over there, look at that, in that tree. Right there, you'll see a bunch of them just sitting around waiting for me to put some seed out or some food. So what you see here is, um, Salvage, Texas. The idea is a model where you could have an interest in a pure salvage outpost co-op, the first one to ever start, where I'll actually put up $15,000 worth of materials at wholesale value. I mean, you're talking about being able to have your doors, your windows, your flooring, your interior skins, your exterior siding. Uh, even turn posts, some of the things like that could be included in your $15,000 initial investment into the co-op for 1 60th interest per house or per $15,000 investment. And you can take the materials off and take them someplace else and use them. You're not obligated to build anything here. Um, you could, if you chose, be building a much bigger house and just use them for one portion of the house. You might buy five packages of $15,000 worth of materials. Believe it or not, that's not a lot of materials if you look at building five houses. And the $15,000 each is your base price for most of your materials. You add some lumber, because no, there's no framing lumber involved, um, and a few other things. And we're going to have the space here. The idea behind getting 60 members or 60 shares is that'll be enough to pay the, all the land off that's left. There's several million dollars in land, but I'm going to pay that off so that the spaces to build in will be available. What's that mean? That means if you want to build a house, you would be able to actually um, rent a uh, covered space like Manifestation Bay and park your house in there while you're building it and come in weekends if you're in Austin, Houston, San Antonio they're all within an hour and a half drive. You could camp out here. We have camping spaces, tents, brand new ones. We have houses you could stay in and you could participate in his seminars, learn how to do it, uh, build your house um, over time in that stall, in that space. Um, I have 14 spaces in Gonzales I can still move over besides the potential to build at least four to six houses at any time in the tiny Texas houses facility, which is part of what I'm going to go ahead and assign over and lease to the, uh, the co-op. The co-op would be an entity that will then be able to bring materials in, stock them in there, sell them through there so the co-op members can make money off of their salvage jobs. But also, um, I'm going to put $3 million worth of salvage available to sell through there. And the profits off of that um, will go into funding the expansion, um, having, all, of course, all the tools there um, to do the work. Um, I have trailers so we can move houses if you want to build them here and move them elsewhere. If you want to build them elsewhere and move them from another pure salvage outpost. Remember, the idea behind this is just to establish... Um, the main warehouses that would fuel and feed other chapters, which means a smaller outpost that might be building two or three houses um, and selling some retail stuff. Um, it might be um, to get another larger outpost going and we just help fund them initially with materials, product, and people who have come here and learned to go back there and launch uh, an outpost where they've learned how to warehouse stuff, learned all the terminology, learned all the logistics, uh, the issues, uh, the bugs, the having a kiln if you need it. All these things can be learned. Um, and, and this is what we want to do here is have a facility where you can come in and have educators. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean me. That means other people. That's the idea behind creating the co-op. 
there are a lot of older people that have a lot of knowledge and the idea of having a, um, I guess we should be clear. I've got a recording studio here. I've got a means for us to do all sorts of cool things. Um, we can do uh, um, basically training, bringing in other experts, being people that know how to do masonry, who know how to do um, tile work, who know how to do blacksmithing, I've got kilns. The idea is to create a market and an environment where you can bring your kids in and learn how to do something to build a house together or to have them build a house for you in that stall that's rented out so it can be available for weekends and stuff. You might take four, five, six months. But if all this land is paid for, which is what I'm going to finish doing, just finish paying it off. It's all I put millions of dollars in making this already. There's ponds, there's chickens, there's, there's all sorts of cool things that are part of this permaculture. Um, the idea being to, to create the models and then have other people do it in other places and morph it. It's going to have to be different. Up north, it'll be a different kind of house, different construction. I mean, this, for example, is my, my beautiful little tiny house. It's, it's only 10 by 12 on the bottom because it was an, a, a frame in my warehouse that was a junker that wasn't plumb, wasn't done right. The, the carpenter turned out like to drink his breakfast, except it wasn't smoothies. It was, it was alcohol. And so he didn't get anything right. So I sat in my warehouse for years, and then finally I came back in. I wanted to build a house for me after about six years. I finally could afford that. Didn't have love story to eat up all my money. And so I built this house and added the top one, made it bigger. So I have a place for my den, and I have a place up there for my, my living room, effectively, um, and my bedroom. And um, I even have a bed that floats that I sleep on, and another bed below it for guests, which is a, a, a big double bed. Um, all these things we put into a tiny house, and then I have a main house I go to if I want to go for kitchen, I want to cook, or something like that. I can do that over there at the main kitchen where other people share it. Um, I have shower up at the front. Um, I don't really need a shower in here every night. And so this allows me to be off-grid. Um, I have very little power requirement. I can have um, walking water instead of running water, so I don't count as a house. I don't have to have a septic system. And uh, you'd be amazed at the, the kind of things you can grow off of. I'm using natural things like urine as a fertilizer because it's a very pure thing with lots of nitro nitrogen in it. And you, all sorts of things you can do. So the idea behind this is to demonstrate it. Um, this little portion that we've got here, where all the chickens are, as you can see over here, they're all watching um, and, and having a snack and cleaning things up. Uh, beautiful chickens, by the way. Uh, one of them produces a green egg. It's a gorgeous green egg. Um, Behind it, you see a pond, one of the ponding areas. That catches water up at a certain amount, and then it'll flow across there and come across here and go down through. Now, each of these areas are different ponding areas, and the goal is ultimately to show how we can move water. There's one up there, and on the far side, you see all the distance. So we're at the top of an area that catches some water and runs it down the hill toward the San Marcos. And from here, you can see there's a lot of elevation, but I created the elevation. It was flat. It didn't exist before. Oh yeah, by the way, can't resist showing you this. Isn't that beautiful? That's why I'm in Texas. So, the idea behind this is to go ahead and let everybody else share. Oh yeah, look at this behind me. I'm walking down this little alleyway. And it leads down to a couple other things, including another catchment area. But, likewise, there's Tang, and Tang is walking along the banks of another pond that goes back a long ways. And this one also is, again, this is low right now. I have uh, lowered this to be able to go ahead and do some work on it. Um, but normally this will sit about two foot higher, foot and a half higher, so these plants will thrive. And eventually this is in the summertime, in the spring, this will all be grapes in here and then blackberries on the other ledges. So, one example of how we're getting natural um, types of plants to grow here and thrive. Incidentally, look at this. Does that remind you of Christmas? There's some berries and some green things and they don't even have to be plastic. They're real here. So. Over there's my chickens. Over there's a, another pond. 
And here's some fun, cool things to look at. Watch this. If you haven't been here before, look down. Yeah. Okay, that is another pond. See how high that water is? And see on this side? How far down that goes? That's probably 15 feet of water. And then that, in turn, goes over to here and then goes down. Woo! That's how you get in. That's a canal. And that's another pond up there that's higher than that pond. That is the one we're at over there. That's the pasture. You can see miles and miles away. You can see the American flag right over there. Right over there. Okay. Anyway, this is my world. Welcome to it. You actually have a chance to be part of it because on the other side of the canal and the ponds on this side of me, we're actually going to have a place to be able to park and lease your space to have your house if you'd like to leave it or if you want to move it away later you could but if you have one here and you're invested as one of the um, charter members of this incredible opportunity to be um, creating a you might say model that can be replicated anywhere um, particularly if you've got somebody supporting you, like we can do, um, providing you with the materials to build your first house and that you're going to sell in your second house or your first house you're going to live in along with your second house is going to be your business. Because imagine, you can build this house with, you know, this has got a lot of fancy windows and that makes it more expensive. But with the kit that I'm talking about, $15,000 in materials, we'll have all your windows, all your doors that you might need, your interior skins, exterior skins, your roof and everything. So you can actually build this house um, with the materials that would come automatically when you become one of the members. So the $15,000 of materials comes to you, but you also get a 60th, 160th share for each $15,000 package. And if we get 60 people or 60 shares, then we'll have everything we need to have tools, stalls, and structures, and a place to do the work for you. If you want to have it done, people will be trained such that you can actually hire people to do it. They'll cost less that way because you help sponsor the seminars than it would if you had me build it back when I was doing this for business. I'm not building it for the public anymore um, in case you haven't caught that already. This is the only way most people can afford to get one of these houses. So what I found out in the time I was doing it, most people, most people, including me, it took me five years, honestly, five years owning the business before I could build Temple Tantra. Most people don't have the cash, 60000 cash, because the banks won't finance this way. They'll finance if you're going to do a toxic box, if you're going to do something that the bankers can make money on, everybody in the system can make money on, call them a recreational vehicle, and you want to go through all that bullshit to get that licensing. And that's what it is. Or you can do it yourself through these co-ops. If we get them going, there'll be co-ops every 150 miles. So you can build it within 150 miles of your house, which keeps the cost of moving it cheaper, but on top of that, we'll have common trailers that you can move around. Like I have moved all these houses on, that trailer. We can replicate, replicate it or we can use that one and move it around if we get enough members to pick up the houses and move them cheap. It used to cost me $5,000 to $15,000 to move a house. That's a lot of money. And most of it was in the trucker and the trailer and such. So if we have a membership all supporting it, there's a lot of things we can do that we couldn't do cheap if somebody was trying to do it as a business because there's all sorts of complications taxes um, expenses just to be a business I learned this to be a corporation it cost me six thousand dollars a year just file the tax returns through the required people I have lawyers I can't represent myself gotta have lawyers cost more money so what we learned in this process is that I can create and help make small businesses possible but I don't want to run a big one I want to have a co-op going and the co-op being a model people getting together to run it and in doing so I'm hoping we can go ahead and make something bigger than any one man can create where all the beneficiaries instead of one man 
you will be the beneficiary. Follow me, help me. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon.